Without a doubt, the Bond girls have left an indelible mark on the James Bond films. While many beautiful women appear throughout the series, we'll focus solely on those who share a romantic connection with the main character. These ladies bring glamour, excitement, and unforgettable moments to their respective movies, making them essential elements of the beloved franchise. Let's delve into the lives and stories of these leading ladies who won over cinema's most famous secret agent. In the James Bond film Die Another Day, Halle Berry brings to life the character Jinx Jordan, an NSA agent with impressive combat skills and undeniable charisma. From the moment she emerges from the ocean in a jaw-dropping bikini, Jinx captures our attention and adds a refreshing energy to the franchise. Barry's portrayal of Jinx showcases her ability to excel in action sequences while maintaining a strong presence on screen. With her sharp wit and tough exterior, Jinx proves herself to be more than just a pretty face, earning respect both from Bond and the audience. One can't forget the iconic visual of Barry emerging from the sea, paying homage to Ursula Andress's famous scene in Dr. No. This nod to the past blends seamlessly with Barry's modern take on the classic Bond girl archetype. Not only does Barry bring physicality and intensity to the role, but she also infuses it with warmth and vulnerability. Her chemistry with Pierce Brosnan's Bond sizzles, making their romantic tension palpable and exciting. Overall, Halle Berry's performance as Jinx Jordan in Die Another Day stands out as one of the most memorable aspects of the film. She breathed new life into the series with her formidable fighting abilities, striking looks, and undeniable charm. Claudine Auger, the French actress who brought the character Domino to life in the James Bond film Thunderball, was known for playing a morally strong woman caught between the hero and the villain. Born on April 26, 1941, in Paris, France, Auger's career spanned over five decades. Auger's portrayal of Domino showcases a woman determined to right her wrongs while being romantically involved with the iconic secret agent, Bond. Initially introduced as the mistress of the villainous Emilio Largo, Domino undergoes a transformation after learning of his nefarious plans. Throughout the film, she displays a strong sense of morality and a desire to do what is right, making her one of the more complex and intriguing female characters in the Bond franchise. Before landing the role of Domino, Auger had already made a name for herself in the acting world. In 1958, she won the Miss World Contest, which opened doors for her in the entertainment industry. She began acting in films during the early 1960s, appearing alongside notable actors like Alain Delon and Jean-Paul Belmondo. However, it wasn't until Thunderball that she gained international fame. Following Thunderball, Auger continued to act in both French and English language productions. Her ability to adapt to various roles demonstrated her versatility as an actress. Despite working in different genres, including drama, comedy, and horror, she never strayed far from her roots in European cinema. Although often remembered for her work in Thunderball, Auger's contributions to the world of film extend beyond her role as Domino. As a testament to her lasting impact, fans still appreciate her performances today. Even now, her performance resonates with audiences, leaving a mark on cinematic history. As we reflect on Claudine Auger's impressive career, we remember her most notably for her role as Domino in Thunderball, playing a morally upright woman navigating a complicated relationship with Bond. While trying to rectify her past mistakes, Auger left an indelible impression on viewers worldwide. Britt Eklund's portrayal of Mary Goodnight in the James Bond film The Man with the Golden Gun showcases a character who is both intelligent and attractive but unfortunately underutilizes her potential as an MI6 agent. Instead, she serves as comedic relief and eye candy throughout the movie. Eklund's Mary Goodnight is a far cry from the capable and formidable female agents seen in other Bond films. Despite being depicted as having gone through rigorous MI6 training, she rarely gets the chance to put these skills into practice. Rather, she spends much of the film requiring rescue from various perilous situations. Despite this, Eklund brings charm and wit to the role, making Mary Goodnight a likable character despite her limited capabilities. Her interactions with Roger Moore's James Bond add levity to the film, providing some light-hearted moments amidst the action and intrigue. It's worth noting that Eklund was not the first choice for the part. Producers initially approached Raquel Welch and Susan George before settling on the Swedish actress. Nevertheless, Eklund embraced the role and brought her unique energy to the part, creating a memorable if somewhat diminished version of a classic Bond girl. While it may have been disappointing for fans of strong female leads to see Mary Goodnight reduced to a supporting player, rather than a central figure in the plot, 
Eklund's performance remains a highlight of the man with the golden gun. Even in a role that didn't fully utilize her talents, she managed to shine, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and solidifying her place in Bond franchise history. Moving forward, let's delve into the life of Mai Hama, the actress who brought to life the unforgettable character of Kissy Suzuki in the James Bond film You Only Live Twice. Born on November 20, 1943, in Tokyo, Japan, Mi Hama began her career in show business at a young age. She first appeared on screen in the early 1960s and quickly gained popularity due to her striking beauty and undeniable talent. However, it was her portrayal of Kissy Suzuki that would cement her place in cinema history. As Kissy Suzuki, Mi Hama embodied a woman of strength and resilience. Trained as a skilled ninja, she used her abilities to protect her homeland and those she loved, but Kissy wasn't just a fighter. She also had a softer side, showing compassion and vulnerability when needed. Her complex character offered more than just visual appeal, making her a standout among other female leads of the time. Off-screen, Mihama continued to captivate audiences with her diverse range of roles. From dramas to comedies, she proved herself to be a versatile actress capable of tackling any genre. Despite facing challenges in an industry dominated by men, Hama persevered and became a trailblazer for future generations of Japanese actresses. Throughout her career, Mihama has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. With each role, she brings depth and nuance to her characters, challenging stereotypes and breaking barriers along the way. And while she may have retired from acting in recent years, her legacy continues to resonate with fans both old and new. So, as we reflect on the career of Maihama, we can't help but appreciate the impact she's made on the entertainment industry. Through her portrayal of Kissy Suzuki alone, she showed us that women could be powerful, intelligent, and beautiful all at once. And for that, we will always cherish her contributions. Lois Childs, an accomplished actress, brought the character Holly Goodhead to life in the James Bond film Moonraker. Goodhead, a CIA agent and astronaut, proved that beauty and brains could go hand in hand. She worked alongside Bond to foil the plans of villain Hugo Drax, who aimed to wipe out humanity and repopulate the Earth with his chosen specimens. Goodhead's intelligence and capability were essential in helping Bond navigate through the complex web of Drax's schemes. Her presence added depth to the film, showcasing a strong female lead who was more than just a love interest for Bond. Despite facing criticism for her perceived stiffness in acting, Childs managed to hold her own against veteran actor Roger Moore. Child's portrayal of Goodhead left an indelible mark on the Bond franchise. Although she had initially turned down the role due to personal reasons, she ultimately accepted it after being convinced by the producers. This decision paid off as she went on to become one of the most memorable Bond girls in the series' history. Before starring in Moonraker, Childs had already made a name for herself as a model and actress. Born on April 15, 1947, in Alice, Texas, she grew up in a family that valued education. After graduating from high school, Childs attended the University of Texas at Austin before pursuing a career in modeling. Her striking looks quickly caught the attention of the fashion industry, leading her to work with renowned designers and photographers. Eventually, Childs decided to try her hand at acting, studying under prominent acting coach Lee Strasberg. Although her performance in Moonraker received mixed reviews, Childs continued to act in various films and television shows throughout her career. Some notable appearances include roles in The Way We Were, Death Hunt, and Creepshow 2. Additionally, she appeared on popular TV shows like Dallas, Knott's Landing, and Heart to Heart. Despite facing challenges early on, including losing both her parents at a young age and overcoming stage fright during her acting studies, Childs persevered and built a successful career in entertainment. Through her iconic role as Holly Goodhead, she demonstrated that women can excel in traditionally male-dominated fields while maintaining their grace and femininity. Maud Adams, the actress who brought to life the character of Octopussy in the James Bond film of the same name, embodied a woman of great intellect, allure, and independence. Born on February 12, 1945, in Sweden, she began her career as a model before transitioning into acting. The role of Octopussy, a wealthy businesswoman and circus troupe leader, highlighted Adams' ability to portray strong, complex female characters. Her performance was marked by her intelligence, as she skillfully navigated the cutthroat world of international smuggling while maintaining her elegant demeanor. As a seductive and enigmatic figure, Adams captivated audiences with her charm and mystique. 
Despite being entangled in dangerous situations, she maintained her autonomy and demonstrated her resourcefulness, making her a formidable opponent and a compelling character study. Off screen, Adams continued to break barriers for women in Hollywood. She went on to appear in numerous films and television shows, showcasing her versatility as an actress and solidifying her status as a respected figure in the industry. To this day, Maude Adams remains a beloved icon among James Bond fans and cinephiles alike. Her portrayal of Octopussy left an indelible mark on cinema history, inspiring future generations of actors and filmmakers to push the boundaries of storytelling and representation. Tanya Roberts, known for her role as Stacey Sutton in the James Bond film A View to a Kill, faced criticism for her portrayal of a geologist. Some viewers found it hard to believe she had the necessary expertise for the role, which required scientific knowledge. Her character's relationship with Bond, played by an older Roger Moore, also raised eyebrows due to their significant age difference. Despite these issues, Tanya Roberts remained a memorable part of the franchise, leaving an impression on audiences with her performance. In the film Live and Let Die, actress Jane Seymour takes on the role of Solitaire, a psychic who becomes entangled with James Bond. However, Solitaire's unique abilities disappear after she shares intimate moments with Bond, which reduces her character's importance and transforms her into merely another one of his possessions. As a result, Solitaire's significance in the storyline diminishes considerably. Initially introduced as a powerful figure capable of predicting future events, she quickly devolves into a mere accessory for Bond, serving little purpose beyond being his love interest. Despite her initial promise as a dynamic and intriguing character, Solitaire ultimately falls victim to gender stereotypes prevalent during the time period. Despite the limited scope of her role in live, and Let Die, it remains memorable due to Seymour's exceptional performance. Her portrayal of Solitaire showcases both vulnerability and strength, capturing audience attention even amidst a star-studded cast including Roger Moore as Bond himself. Although reduced to playing second fiddle to Bond, Seymour manages to imbue Solitaire with depth and nuance, elevating what could have been a forgettable character. Throughout her career, Jane Seymour has proven herself a versatile performer, excelling in various genres and mediums, from historical dramas like The Scarlet Pimpernel to modern series like Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, she continues to demonstrate her range and talent. Yet, despite these accomplishments, her iconic turn as solitaire persists as a fan favorite among audiences worldwide. Reflecting back on Seymour's portrayal of solitaire, we can see how far Hollywood has come regarding female representation, but also acknowledge how much further progress needs to be made. While films today still struggle with fully realizing complex female leads, strides towards equality continue to push boundaries and challenge traditional norms. Barbara Bach's most iconic role came in 1977 when she starred alongside Roger Moore in the James Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me. In it, she played Anya Amasova, also known as Agent 30, a highly skilled KGB operative who initially sees Bond as her enemy, but eventually becomes his ally and love interest over the course of their mission together. Amasova is a strong and intelligent character, able to hold her own against Bond both physically and mentally. She is cool under pressure, quick thinking, and fiercely loyal to her country. Throughout the movie, she proves herself to be more than a match for Bond, earning his respect and admiration along the way. Off-screen, Barbara Bach brought her own unique blend of charm and charisma to the role of Anya Amasova. Born and raised in Queens, New York, Bach began modeling in her teens before moving to Italy, where she became a successful actress in European films. Her exotic looks and natural talent caught the eye of producers Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman, who cast her in the coveted role of Anya Amasova. Despite being one of the few American actors to play a major role in a Bond film up until that point, Barbara Bach fit seamlessly into the established franchise. With her sultry voice, striking features, and undeniable presence, she proved to be a perfect foil for Roger Moore's debonair spy. Their chemistry on screen was electric, making The Spy Who Loved Me one of the most memorable entries in the series. Since then, Barbara Bach has continued to act in various projects throughout her career, while also becoming an advocate for animal rights and mental health awareness. However, it is her role as Anya Amasova in The Spy Who Loved Me that remains her most enduring legacy, solidifying her place in cinema history as a talented and captivating leading lady. Honor Blackman's portrayal of Pussy Galore in the James Bond film Goldfinger has left an indelible mark on cinema history, 
As the leader of an all-female flying circus, she commanded respect and showcased her character's fierce independence. Blackman was born on August 22, 1925, in London, England. Her interest in acting began during her time at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. After graduation, she started her career on stage before moving on to television and film. Her role as Pussy Galore in Goldfinger, released in 1964, catapulted her to international fame. In the movie, she plays a former criminal who runs a flying circus and initially crosses paths with Sean Cannery's James Bond as his enemy. However, as the story unfolds, their relationship takes a romantic turn. What sets Blackman's character apart is her strength and agency. Unlike previous female characters in the franchise, Pussy Galore is not merely a love interest, but rather a formidable opponent for Bond. She leads an independent life and commands respect from those around her. Moreover, her position as the leader of an all-female flying circus highlights her leadership skills and autonomy. Despite being known primarily for her work in Goldfinger, Blackman had a successful career both before and after the film. Before playing Pussy Galore, she appeared in several British TV shows and films, including The Avengers. Post Goldfinger, she continued working in various productions, including the popular British soap opera Coronation Street. Throughout her career, Honor Blackman proved herself to be a talented actress capable of taking on diverse roles. From her early days on stage to her iconic performance in Goldfinger, she consistently delivered strong performances and demonstrated her versatility. Even today, fans continue to celebrate her legacy as one of Hollywood's most influential and memorable female characters. Diana Rigg leaves a lasting impression as Tracy Davicenso in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. As the daughter of a wealthy crime boss, she initially comes across as a glamorous debutante. But Tracy is far more than just a pretty face. She's intelligent, resourceful, and fiercely independent, a stark contrast to the typical damsel in distress often found in James Bond films. Throughout the movie, Tracy proves herself to be an equal match for Bond, both intellectually and emotionally. Their relationship develops into one of mutual respect and love, leading to a shocking twist when Tracy becomes the target of Blofeld's vengeance. Despite knowing the dangers, Tracy stands by Bond, even sacrificing herself to save him in the film's heartbreaking conclusion. The impact of Tracy's death resonates deeply with Bond, leaving him devastated and questioning his life choices. This emotional depth sets on Her Majesty's Secret Service as apart from other Bond movies and cements Tracy's place as one of the most memorable characters in the franchise. Overall, Diana Riggs' portrayal of Tracy DiVincenzo is a standout performance that challenges traditional gender roles and adds nuance to the typically action-packed spy